because it's Monday. I'm drinking heavily on a Monday. Hello, five o'clock audience. I'm recently invested in cryptocurrency. Am I a genius or an idiot? Stay tuned. Jokes aside, cryptocurrencies and NFTs are some of the hottest and newest and most polarizing kinds of investments that are available to people. And in the crypto market, fortunes are made and lost in a matter of hours. When you can see a singular Bitcoin rise to $68,000 one month and then $17,000 the next. I exaggerate a little bit, but you know what I mean. They're memes, they're scams, they're overvalued, they're bubble bound to burst. They are the future of investing. So. Are cryptocurrencies worth all the hype? It's five o'clock. Let's talk finance. So the reason behind today's video is because of the so-called crypto market crash that occurred a little over a week ago. What am I talking about? Well, on Saturday, June 18th, Bitcoin experienced a record low of $17,700 a coin. Now, seven months prior, it was trading at over $68,000 thousand dollars it hasn't traded this low like below twenty thousand dollars since december of 2020 and with other similar altcoins like ethereum also experiencing massive drops year over year we're talking like 35 percent it has a lot of people speculating that what whether or not the crypto market has crashed whether or not this crypto bubble has popped whether or not we are in a crypto winter which is honestly quite a lot of like jargon and questions and uncertainty for people who just want to know what the f is going on here. Like what even is this market? So that's what this is. This is an introduction into cryptocurrency and crypto investing, including the pros and cons of getting into the crypto market, talking a little bit about the news of crypto and then ending with my theories for the future of the market and how I plan to make some money off of it, hopefully. So to start, what is a cryptocurrency? <laughs> Like we hear a lot about it. What is a cryptocurrency? So a cryptocurrency is a type of currency that exists solely in digital form, meaning there is no tangible token that exists of this currency in the world as we know it. You cannot hold a Bitcoin or an Ether coin the way that you can hold a penny or a dollar. How, how does this even exist? Like how do cryptocurrency even exist if, if it's not going to be in alignment with fiat currency? Also fiat currency is just like, in layman's terms, currency as we know it, like commonly established currency, the US dollar, the British pound, Japanese yen, that's fiat currency. So a question that is pretty commonly asked is how did we get from these 190 fiat tangible currencies in the world to that plus 19,000 different kinds of cryptocurrencies? Where does cryptocurrency begin? What is the start? And I will give this to you in a minute and 30 seconds because I think the history of cryptocurrency is not only fascinating, but extremely useful to understand exactly what you're investing in. Bitcoin was a product of the financial crisis of 2008 when its creator, a Satoshi Nakamoto, not the real name, lost faith in fiat currency and decided to create their own new digital currency and named it Bitcoin. And that was the origin, that was the origin of Bitcoin. Now, from 2008 to 2009, Bitcoin grew in popularity on the Internet's underworld black market due to its supposed non-traceability by you know that that users would suffer if they use a digitized form of a standard currency think like dollars or pounds but even though you know people thought that most governments couldn't trace this currency it, it absolutely could be traced like for the record just letting you know it still allowed for anonymous trading over the internet while secured by this newfound technology known as blockchain Blockchain protected these transactions and allowed people to go about their business. In 2009, that is when Bitcoin began to get traded publicly on the market and it sold for eight cents a coin. Like, <laughs> eight cents a coin. Then 2010 came and here is the first mainstream, not black market transaction of a Bitcoin for a physical, tangible good, pizza. Then in 2013, it was recognized in a Texas state court as an actual currency. This is a big deal because now it is not just this thing that exists on the internet, but it's actually something that can be used in states to trade goods, at least in Texas at that time. In 2017, that is when Bitcoin on the publicly traded market rose to $1,000 a coin. And then things went nuts because later that year in 2017, Bitcoin rose to $19,000. And the price fluctuated quite a lot over the next couple of years, moving by several thousand dollars you know, year over year. But then in November of 2021, Bitcoin hit a market high, an, unfe an infeasible market high of $68,000 a coin. Kind of a different story from 2009 when it was trading at eight cents. Now, 
at the same time that all this Bitcoin stuff is going on, when Bitcoin is rising in popularity and fame and controversy and head scratches like, what the heck is this? Now you see the rise of these altcoins, some you know, 19,000 other different kinds of cryptocurrency decided, hey, I want to I want to get into this market. And they're known as altcoins specifically because they are alternatives to Bitcoin. It's a clever name, right? <laughs> Enter 2022 and now we're in the market as we know it, where trading cryptocurrency isn't just something that you can do and may do, it's something that people actually do, especially when 56% of Americans have either traded in cryptocurrency, held cryptocurrency, or are currently holding cryptocurrency. It's a thing. It's a thing just as much as it is trading actual currencies or actual equities or anything else. It is a publicly traded good. And now there is a huge market for it. How's that for a history lesson? I need a drink. So yeah, cryptocurrency has existed on the trading market for over a decade now, and it's traded very similarly to other currencies, but cryptocurrencies aren't government regulated, at least on the whole. The US government has control over every single dollar that is, exists in the global economy today. If they want more dollars out in the economy, they print more. If they want fewer dollars in the economy, they print less. But the US dollar is controlled by a singular regulated entity, this overarching entity. That's not how cryptocurrencies are regulated. It's not how they're controlled. In fact, they exist specifically in a market that does not have a singular regulating body, but instead actually exists in peer-to-peer -peer networks. So because there is no singular overarching entity that is governing and controlling the sale and utilization of cryptocurrencies, how does this market, how does the use of cryptocurrency not devolve into complete and utter and total chaos? Enter blockchain. Blockchain is historically what allowed cryptocurrencies to be traded and sold anonymously and securely. When you are in possession of a coin, that coin contains with it this immutable blockchain database attached to it. Immutable means it cannot be altered in any way. So when you hold onto a coin, there is a record attached to it of every single transaction that has occurred with that coin since that coin's existence. And that cannot be changed or altered. So right now in the database, the last registry was, you know, you became the owner of this coin. Now, when you want to transact with that coin, as that transaction has been initiated, there is now this chain effect that goes around. There's a lot of chain puns in here, but there is now this effect that runs around. So a bunch of other computers in your network, this is where the peer-to-peer -peer networking aspect comes in. They will take a look at the transaction and they will say whether or not this makes sense. Their computers are going to corroborate the validity of the transaction. And if it's correct, the transaction goes through and then another block is written to the chain and the coin now passes ownership. That was how they prevented theft and how they remained, you kept things anonymous was they would use you know, certain kind of hashed algorithms to confirm whether or not that this all occurred. So that's, that's cryptocurrency and blockchain at a very, very high level nutshell. So that's what it is, but how does one invest in it? How does, how does it actually like make people money? And I think this is kind of like the biggest crux of the episode. So I'm glad you're stuck, you've stuck around this long if you have. How do you actually invest in cryptocurrency? Well, there are a bunch of different trading platforms that exist that allow for the trading, specifically like including cryptocurrencies. And that's places like FTX and Robinhood and Coinbase and crypto. They all offer a way to do it. And trading cryptocurrency is again, I keep comparing it to trading like an actual currency, but that's kind of what it is. You exchange a certain amount of your currency, I'll say a certain dollar amount of your currency in exchange for a certain percentage of a coin of a cryptocurrency or however many coins you can purchase at, at that specific dollar amount. So right now a Bitcoin is worth 20 something thousand dollars. If I want to purchase a Bitcoin, I have to fork over 20 something odd thousand dollars. I could buy half a Bitcoin for 10,000, but who wants half a Bitcoin? I say this jokingly, I cannot afford either. So that's easy. That's the easy part. The hard part is deciding what to invest in in a market with 19,000 different tokens and currencies. Oh, that and watching the utter volatility of this market. That's, that's the hard part. So why is cryptocurrency so stinking polarizing? Here's my hot take on it. Um, and I have no idea who's going to agree or disagree with me, but this is my hot take. The crypto market is highly speculative and decentralized. 
there's no inherent value to any digital currency. There is nothing backing it. There is no gold standard backing it. Nothing other than binary digits, which is super risky. Why would you ever invest in something that doesn't have any inherent value? But you know, it's also really, really risky and doesn't have any inherent value. Options trading, commodities, penny stocks. These sectors, these specific things in which you invest in are also riddled with speculation. These are literally known as speculative markets. So why don't we hear people have bigger issues with them? Everybody hates on crypto, but people don't hate on penny stocks nearly as much as they hate on crypto. <laughs> really, it's because these are established market sectors. These are established speculative market sectors. And crypto is brand spanking new. I mean, it only hit popularity in the market five years ago, which is like seconds in the grand market scale. And people don't always understand crypto. They don't, don't always understand the idea of value that is not inherent, but, in sim but is simply speculative and derivative. And I think that causes a lot of fear in people who are used to trading in certain kinds of assets. And that fear can lead to dislike and sometimes hatred. But that's just my hot take. Please don't send hateful things to me in the comments. But why would you want to invest in cryptocurrency? Well. <laughs> the obvious answer, again, my personal opinion, this is an investment sector dominated by young people and it has made overnight millionaires. The fact of the matter is people who bought Bitcoin in 2017 at $1,000 and then if they were smart enough and lucky enough to sell it off in 2021 at $68,000 saw a 6,700% return on their investment. And that's like only in four years. Like that is kind of the, the crux of it is because this market is so volatile and it's so specula speculative, you have the ability to make an insanely high volume of money in a really, really short and condensed period of time. And it's a market sector that is really, I, I almost want to argue that it is a little bit more inherent to young people because we are so ingrained in today's technology that we have that benefit of understanding, that ease of understanding what we are investing in just a little bit more. But granted, you could also absolutely lose everything overnight as was, as was the case with uh, Dogecoin and Shiba Inu. Um, so there's that. But if you want my true and honest opinion about why I have currently invested in crypto, I mean, you've stuck around this video long enough, so I, I would hope you would thank you. So truth be told, and it's not just the whiskey um, and my tinfoil hat that I'm currently wearing, as you can see. Oh. Crypto is here to stay. Whether we like it or not, crypto is a new facet to the existing market. I am a believer that if the origin story of Bitcoin tells us anything, that is people will find value in cryptocurrency for its original purpose. And that is, it is a decentralized universal method of exchange. Something that is going to have a very integral role in the internet as we go forward in the future. Like it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So yeah, um, am I buying into the crypto market? Yeah, because I mean, in my tinfoil hat theories, I do expect that there is going to be some pretty stark financial uncertainty in the US markets over the next couple of years. I mean, personally, I'm thinking that we're gonna hear some pretty unsettling news within like the next month that we're probably already in a recession. But as that happens and as inflation keeps rising, I can see people starting to lose faith in the US dollar the same way that the originator of Bitcoin lost faith in fiat currency. And I do see there is a need for having alternative methods of exchange to kind of combat the losing value of the US dollar. So I could easily see people turning more towards cryptocurrencies, especially in the coming years, but you know, people leaning more into that kind of a market over time. And plus, um, right now, it seems more like the crypto market is regulating out as opposed to bottoming out. So this is not crypto bubble has burst, everything's been a scam. I think cryptocurrency for the longest time has been pretty highly overvalued, and this is a market regulation, which it just means that we are now kind of baselining and then it's just gonna keep going up again. That's why we're in a crypto, you know, people talk about a crypto winter and we are in a crypto bear market and people are gonna get really concerned and keep selling like this was always a scam, but similar to just about how you treat any other market, I am less inclined to run away from a bear market as I am to run in. Abigail Johnson, the Fidelity chairman of investments, she said this is her, she believes that this is a good time to start to double down in crypto because it's cheaper, it's cheaper than it was buying in at almost $70,000 of Bitcoin. Like this is, 
this is a good market to invest in. And I say that every time, specifically because right now on the whole, the US market and crypto markets are in a bear market. We are down 30% overall year to date, which you know, definitionally puts us into a bear market. And bear markets are a better time to buy objectively compared to bull markets. So that's my tinfoil hat take on that one. That is everything for this episode. Thank you all so much for sticking around to the very end. Um, if you like this video, like, subscribe, please leave a nice comment in the comment section below. Um, I'm looking for 100 subscribers. Still, we're getting closer, but I would like 100 subscribers. And if we do, I will have a, a YouTube live stream cocktail party in my kitchen where we'll make cocktails and have a great time talking finance. Um, yeah, leave any questions that you have for me or the channel in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you all later this week. Uh, that being said, I'm out of my sours. So um, cheers and have a good evening. This is 5 o'clock Finance, signing off.